Hello, everyone, and welcome to Floyd Street's Finest, the Louisville Hoops podcast presented by the Field of 68 Media Network. I'm your host, Jeff Greer, and uh, give me a follow on Twitter, at Jeff Greer, and make sure, before we get into our very special guest for the day, uh, that you leave a rating and review, subscribe, and download Floyd Street's Finest. It helps us spread our podcasts throughout uh all of your different podcasting platforms uh, and helps us grow our network. We have so many great podcasts out there already. Jeff Goodman and Robbie Hummel, Rob Doster, Tim Miles, a bunch of team podcasts too, just like this one, including Kentucky with Wayne Turner and Indiana with AJ Guyton. But I won't make you wait any longer. Today's episode features an interview uh, with a great guest, Carly Jones, graduate transfer, playmaking high scoring guard from Cincinnati, uh, who comes to Louisville by way of Radford uh, University. Carleek, welcome to the show, my man. How's it going? It's going good. Uh, appreciate you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So how are you liking Louisville so far? Um, I'm loving it. Um, I'm enjoying every second of it. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a great experience for me so far. And uh, how much have you actually been able to see of the city and, and campus and everything? I realize you're kind of – locked up in basketball mode at this point um right now like you said i'm a little locked down with you know just school work and you know practice and stuff like that um but uh when i first got here here in uh june um i was able to get around myself a little bit uh i know they gave me kind of gave me a tour a little bit when i first got here um but you know i kind of took it upon myself to you know just drive around and get used to the city and and just try to find some, you know, some things to, some new things for me, you know, to, you know, see around the city. So uh, that that's been pretty good. H- had you been to Louisville before, uh, before you came here for for school? No, I've driven through Louisville, but I haven't, you know, actually got to stop and, you know, okay. see. Louisville. Okay. So, what were your first impressions? What kind of vibe did you get this summer when you were driving around? Um, it kind of reminded me a lot of Cincinnati, honestly, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, the city, you know, big buildings, um, a lot of food places. Um, and, and like I said, just like, just how, you know, everything was set up, um, you know, the downtown area, I I felt like it was somewhat similar to Cincinnati. So, um, I enjoyed it and, you know, I kind of, you know, compared the two and, you know, I'm, I'm loving here a little bit. All right, so I got to ask you, this is a big question before I get into some of the things I got prepared for you. Do you consider Louisville to be a southern city or a midwestern city? Everybody asks these questions. They all, uh, everybody always wants to know. Um, I'm going to say midwestern from off, okay. off of what I know so far and uh, I experienced so far. Okay. Okay. That's a big answer. Weighing in there. I like that. No, no, uh, no qualms whatsoever about weighing in. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So I, the first thing I got to ask you, I, I was at practice recently. I think it was like two weeks ago now. And I noticed that you guys are going through all these drills and Carleek has to make sure he gets a sip out of this little can. I don't know if it's like juice or soda or, or what is, what is your like little go-to in practice drink that you have to get sips of every now and again? Um, the, oh, actually the can, I think we were in the yum. And basically the can, which actually threw me off, uh, I just asked for Gatorade. Like, oh, I like okay. to, you know, get a Gatorade, uh, get a sip of Gatorade, you know, every chance we, you know, get a break or something like that. And, and they bring me this can. <laughs> and I'm kind of looking at it funny. I'm like, I asked one of the managers, I'm like, nah, I didn't ask for soda, bro. I asked for like a can, like a can of, <laughs> like I asked for a Gatorade. And he's just like, no, this, this is Gatorade. Like, so I get to looking at the can and it's actually Gatorade, hmm. lemon lime Gatorade. So I, I felt awkward, you know, just cracking a can open in the middle of practice. <laughs> um, and I drunk, and I drunk some of the, the Gatorade in it and it actually tastes pretty good. Um, but you know, it was definitely new for me. Um, and it, it definitely kind of felt weird just opening a can during practice and stuff. But uh, it was just Gatorade, and, you know, that's, you know, definitely a go-to for me in practice. Okay, okay. Because I, I was thinking, like, okay, this dude's got a can. 
<laughs> you know, it could be like pineapple juice or like, you know, something that you would think would be in a can. So I would have the same reaction if someone handed me Gatorade or Powerade in, in, a, in a can. I'd be freaked out. Right. When he handed it to me, I'm like, man, I kind of don't want to open this right here. You know, <laughs> Coach Mack, you know, kind of walking around the gym at the time. And I'm just like, no, nah, I don't want to see him. I don't want him to see me opening a can and be like, what, what is he drinking? So. <laughs> what, what's in your like? When you're going through either a practice day, you know you've got a, a tough workout, maybe you've got individuals the same day or game day, do you have like uh, a food and drink routine that you try to stick to? Um, no, not really. Um, you know, usually it, it switches up. Uh, I know my drinks are usually like uh, Gatorades, Gatorades and water. Um, but there are no, there is no specific meal or anything like that. Um, I just definitely stay hydrated though, for mm -hmm. sure. Got to. I actually learned the other day. Uh, I've been taking voice lessons, and I learned the other day that you've got to be hydrated the day before whatever you're doing, so that you got to drink all your water on like Friday if you've got something on Saturday, because that's apparently when the hydration actually matches up. So. Yeah, you know, something that I learned. You learn something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I've uh I've had talks with my weight coach and stuff like that, and and I was just telling them like um the next morning we used to have them like our very next morning maybe nine something in the morning eight thirty something in the morning, and I would tell them like I don't I don't feel hydrated. Mm -hmm. I drank, I woke up, got a couple you know bottles of water in my system, and he told me like it's about what you're drinking the night before, mm. uh, and. You know, some of my teammates have even said it too. Like, you drink a couple of bottles of water before you go to sleep, you wake up and you feel, you know, a lot better. So I've uh, I've started to, you know, do that, and 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 it's not just for the condition; it's for anything. So uh, I've I've learned that lesson, and it's definitely been uh, helping. Yeah, feel like Superman the next day if you have some right. water. <laughs> have you talked to uh, Have you talked to Kristen Cunningham about his uh, his water obsession? That that was like. The dude was like collecting different waters and he would study like pH levels. And like, I mean, he was really serious into water when he was a grad transfer at Louisville. Oh no, actually no. But now that you said that, I, I definitely have to have to ask him. Um, I do kind of realize like, you know, through workouts and practices and stuff, he's just like, he does always have a water. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, like I said, I'm a Gatorade guy. So if I go get a Gatorade, I would ask him like, "Yo, you need a Gatorade?" And he'll be like, "Nah, I'll take a water though." Like, so I kind of, <laughs> I kind of realized that. There you go. All right. So yeah, you'll have to ask him. He's he's like the most serious you could possibly be about water. Yeah. Is that's, C that's what's up. Yeah. Um, all right. So let me ask you first. Um, you know, when you go back and, and I'm a big numbers guy when it comes to, to sports, you go back, you look at your last season at Radford, everything jumped. I mean, everything got so much better. Three point shooting, your free throw shooting, obviously your, your, your points, your assists, everything turnovers went down. I know you had really strong freshman and sophomore years, but what changed with that last season that, that showed you jumping across the board like that um just motivation um i know i have goals and goals in in life and goals are where i want to reach to and where i want to be mm -hmm. um and it's just me like you know telling myself i, I want to be better every day i want to be you know better than i was last year um i've had a couple of co uh, conversations with the head coach at raffer um and we we had multiple conversations just about you know you know, that, that, that transfer from freshman to sophomore year. Um, Cause I had a, a pretty, you know, solid freshman year. Um, and he was just telling me that, you know, most guys like to relax their sophomore year, um, you know, take it casual because, you know, you had a great freshman year and think that, you know, things basically are going to be given to you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and those conversations kind of stood out to me. Um, and I just felt like also that, you know, my whole life I was, you know, an underdog or as, as like to, a lot of people like to say slept on. Mm -hmm. um, and that's always, you know, something I keep in my head. Um, you know, my sophomore year, I wasn't, um, they didn't have me, you know, 
I can't remember if I don't believe I was on a first team or any maybe a third team, second team maybe, but I wasn't on the first team. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's when I had uh, you know, hit a couple game winners, you know, sent us to the tournament. Um, one of our first times going to the tournament, uh, with me being there. And uh that following year I didn't get any, you know, the accolades I thought I should. And, you know, it made me mad. Uh, <laughs> it definitely made me mad and, and it motivated me. And I just basically kept that hunger. Um, and and I, um, I've talked to, you know, my, you know, coaches and, and asked them what, you know, what do they think, can, you know, I should do to be better. Mm-hmm. Um, and they told me, you know, I have to shoot the ball better. Um, I have to, you know, as a point guard who always has the ball in his hands, you have to have less turnovers. Um, um, and, and really just, you know, just working on my game and being motivated. Um, and like I said, with goals and wanting to be, um, better person and want to be, you know, a better player and want to reach, you know, where I want to be. I'm gonna have to, you know, continue to to stay motivated and, you know, to be hungry and to work on my game constantly. And I believe that's what I did, and I will continue to do. So you gotta. So hearing hearing that you could be motivated like that, you gotta talk to Mac about what motivates him because that dude. Like you would not expect it. I mean, he's pretty intense when he, when he's in coaching mode, he's real competitive, but like he would scroll through Twitter, at least his first year, he would scroll through Twitter and, and check like what people were saying about him just to like get riled up. But my favorite story of all time about Mac getting motivated and trying to motivate other people. So his first job was at Mount Notre Dame, which I'm, I know you're familiar with in Cincinnati. And uh, he's coaching these girls, and it's his first season, and I forgot, like, the coach of a rival school said something that was in no way – none of the players in any way took it as, as a, a snide remark, as, as talking smack in any way, shape, or form. But Mac was so mad at this article that he highlighted the quote in the article. He printed out copies of the article – and had it plastered over all of the lockers covering the entire locker room. So they couldn't get into their lockers. They couldn't see the walls, anything with just copies of this article with the highlighted quote on it. So the man is, has been intense for a long time about motivational tactics. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's definitely, uh, that's definitely, it's definitely uh, cool. I think um, to have a coach that motivated is, is amazing. Um, and it's so crazy that you say that because I've had times where, you know, coaches would, and not only coaches, but myself, you know, would put or ask our ex coaches to put those kind of things in my locker, like um, our team being placed, you know, bottom of the conference or basically, you know, anything where, you know, it can motivate me and it'll be putting lockers all across the locker room. <laughs> you can't go to the bathroom without seeing it. Um, they put it in our snack area where you couldn't, you know, get no snack without seeing it. Basically just <laughs> letting you guys know and basically remembering, you know, making making sure you don't forget it and then it motivates you. And, and, and I haven't got to, the, you know, the, the, best, the best of the stories, you know, of, of Coach Mack, but, you know, seeing how motivated he is, you know, in the beginning of practices and after mm-hmm. practice and stuff like that is, is definitely good to see, especially from your head coach. Yeah, for sure. And you'll notice, I'm sure once the games start, you'll, you'll, yeah. <laughs> you'll notice that. Um, yeah. So, uh, so when you go, uh, I had to ask one other thing about that shooting percentage. You mentioned you kind of working on everything. Like, so Dwayne Sutton, when he was at Louisville, every year he got slightly better at three point shooting, but you went from like twenties percentages in twenties to 40%. Did you change your mechanics or any or anything with your delivery, or was it just, you know, better shot selection? Like, what what changed that much that you could go ahead and double your three point shooting or free throw shooting? Also, really skyrocketed. Um, yes, I, I changed my delivery. So I had a uh, watch film and stuff, and and really I was thinking just because my shot my shot was low, mm-hmm. um, that sometimes I wasn't able to get it off. Um, so I, I was able to look at film and see actually how much time I really had in, in some of those, you know, films. 
And, and not only that, I had uh, with my shot, I had my thumb a little too, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to say my thumb was too involved. Okay. Uh, and so I kind of adjusted that and, um, and, and it started to, it was awkward at first, but you know, it started to feel better and shots were going in more. Um, so I adjusted my thumb and you know, my shooting and, and my form and stuff. And then also I doubled my reps. Um, so whatever I was doing, you know, last year, I doubled it. So um, I went from, you know, shooting 500 to shooting, you know, trying to get up a thousand in a day. Um, wow. So stuff like that. And, and, and it was um, it was rough, um, rough, uh, especially you know with you know changing the shot and and it it took it took some time, but um, you know the work paid off. Um, so. That's crazy. So how did was it you that noticed the thumb thing, or or was it a coach, or how, how did you um, pick up on that? Coaches, mm -hmm. my coaches. Um, Interesting. Yeah, and then we had a GA there at Radford, uh, Brad Gilbert, who. Mm -hmm. um, who kind of also sat down with me and seen we seen some film and um, who was guest who was basically in there every day with me, mm -hmm. twice a day, um, no matter the time I was able to call him and he was there for you know me to to work out and stuff. So I, I definitely give big props to him, but uh, he was one of the guys that in my coaches were uh, were who seen it and seen where I could you know progress and you know possibly you know adjust and and. and that was the rest is, you know, history. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's like for me, uh, and Louisville's had a couple of grad transfers over the years, Damian Lee, Trey Lewis. Uh, we mentioned CC earlier, Chris Cunningham. Um, it, it's, it's something that I always look to when guys are transferring is the shooting numbers usually are probably going to be the best thing that tell you that this guy will be good at a different level. Um, obviously shot selection will still be a huge factor. I mean, if you have to take 20 shots a game, those numbers are going to go down. Um, so I'm always interested, just like, did it feel like because you made those adjustments and improvements that your game would translate that much better uh, to come into a place like Louisville? Um, yes, definitely. Um, and I think it's helped my game because, you know, at first it was, you know, guys who were, you know, going under my screens, um, mm -hmm. basically guarding me differently. Um, and now that, you know, I'm able to knock down, you know, the three point shot, it, it, it makes it harder, you know, it makes it harder for me to be guarded. Um, and, it, and I definitely think that, you know, it'll help me in this, in this conference, um, being, you know, a three level score, um, and it, and it not only open things for myself, but I feel like it opens things for the team. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, guys not knowing how to guard me. Uh, maybe I can get in the lane or, you know, get past my man, you know, to attract, you know, somebody else's defender. But that way I can get, you know, an assist or find an open man that's open for a shot and stuff like that. So I think it's, you know, big for me, but it also is it's huge for the team and it, it makes everyone else around me better. Absolutely. I was going to say that's something that David Johnson obviously is, is going to want to keep working on because last year he was such a revelation. Like he had the big dunks at Duke and was playing so well. And I think teams like Virginia, some of the teams later in the season, like you said, they started scouting players him differently, which is what right. you would expect. They counter to your counter. Um, and, and so I think it's good for David Johnson to have someone who is a reliable shooter playing off of him. Uh, what are your impressions of him so far? Obviously he's a, he's a big dude. He's a good passer. Like what, what have you taken away from playing with him? Um, it's a lot. Um, I definitely, it, it, it's fun. Um, and it's also definitely new, um, having, you know, six, five, you know, six, six, two man, uh, mm -hmm. slash point guard. Um, but his ability to see the floor, um, his length um, is, is just, you know, it's, it's, it's stuff you can't teach. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm definitely excited to, to play with him. Um, like I said, I tell a lot of people, I, I see some of the same things in me that I, you know, see in him, you know, like I said, uh, on the defensive end, his hands are active. Like I said, his arms are long, great rebounder, um, athletic you know, and, and good on the offensive end. 
Um, he, you know, can pass, can score. And I know we you kind of said something about his shot. Um, honestly, me and David are, you know, a lot of times are in the gym together, you know, working on, you know, our pull-ups, our, our threes and stuff like that. So um, to be able to be in the gym with him and, you know, being able to, you know, step on the floor with him here on the 25th soon is um, definitely big and definitely going to be exciting. Is it like because you guys have had so many injuries and to guys who were expected to and aren't are expected to play a lot, like do you do you two especially feel that added level of like, okay, we, we're, we're pulling the strings here. It's a lot's resting on our shoulders. Um, somewhat because, you know, we're looked at as, you know, the floor generals, the leaders of the team. Um, and, and, it, and it's kind of hard, you know, with, you know, guys, you know, getting hurt and being out. Um, so sometimes, you know, the energy dies down, um, mm -hmm. you know, just with, you know, guys being out. And um, it's to a point where we had about, you know, only, you know, five or, you know, five guys hurt and stuff like that. Like, it's, you know, it's, it's hard. Um, so for us, uh, we just feel like we just got to, you know, stay positive. Um, you know, through, you know, the good and the bad, um, you know, accepting our role mm -hmm. um, and knowing, I, I tell them all the time, like, as of right now, you know, we're the only guards that's that's playing right now. And, you know, we just got to lead our team. Um, and we got to trust one another and just have each other's back and, you know, try to be, you know, the vocal, the vocal, uh, the vocal guys on the team. Now, do you like – when you're trying to learn from another guard, um, what are some things, I guess, that you kind of pay attention to so that you know that, that you're in the right spot when he's got the ball or, or maybe that you can direct him when you've got the ball in your hands? How do you kind of judge that in, in preparation? Uh, honestly, when I first got here, you know, I know with David, uh, it was new. Um, I've kind of seen, you know, during my recruitment process, I was watching games of Louisville. I watched pretty much all of them. Um, and I was able to see just some of how he played. Um, and also when I got here, I kind of asked him, you know, I like asked him personally, like, you know, what do you like? Like, how do you, how do you like to play with, you know? And, you know, I just also, when I'm on the side of, on the sideline during reps, you know, I kind of peep what he does. Um, you know, I've seen film, you know, uh, you know, it, it, it's, I wouldn't say it's hard, but it, it, it takes time. It mm -hmm. takes time to learn your, your, your teammates. And um, it took a little time, but at the same time, I thought it was, you know, pretty easy because, you know, we talk a lot um, as far as, you know, being, you know, the point guards on the team. Um, so us, you know, being able to talk to each other and come to each other about anything um, really is, is a, a big thing. Um, you know, if, he tells me he doesn't like something that's ran or something like that, you know, he can come to me for and vice versa. We can work things out and figure out what's better for us and what's, you know, what's not and stuff like that. So I think that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I mean, I, I'm, I know that I'm one of many who who see the team's success running through you too. I mean, I, it just feels like that, how you guys work together and vibe together as players and as people uh, is a huge, is going to be a huge factor in, in where Louisville goes this season. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned when you were making your decision um, and looking at schools that you watched a lot of film, was that kind of your go-to first thing that you did with all the different schools that were recruiting you or, or how did you approach that process? Um, yeah, uh, kind of, I first like, kind of just like made a list of all the schools. Um, I know it sounds bad probably, but, uh, it's just some places where I just knew I wasn't going to go because of like maybe the area mm -hmm. distance and stuff like that. But, um, that's definitely one huge thing. Um, just, you know, watching film, uh, of course, you know, Louisville had, you know, a couple seniors and a couple guys who, you know, have potential to go to the NBA mm -hmm. um, and a bunch of other schools do. So I kind of looked at, you know, how they play, how, you know, some players play that I knew were coming back, like David and um, a couple people. Um, and then same vice versa with other schools. Um, and then just seeing where I can fit in. 
um, who's returning and stuff like that. So uh, when you were looking at all of this stuff, and, and I want I, I got to get this right, so I'm going to read this off my little notepad that I have here. So in your time at Radford, you played, I counted, eight games. You had Ohio State. These are all on the road. Ohio State, Vanderbilt, Virginia Tech, Texas, Clemson, Maryland, Northwestern, Mississippi State. So those are, those are the Power Five schools um, that, in games that you played in. You beat Texas. You beat Northwestern. And you averaged 13.8 points. Um, four and a half assists, three and three point nine rebounds, and a steal per game. You shot forty six percent, but this number stood out to me, and I don't know if this will surprise you or not. Against just those teams, you were thirteen of twenty from three, so that's pretty good. Uh, that's sixty five percent. So, did those games, like, did the memory of those games and the way you played against those teams, like? Did that feed into your feeling at all? Like, you know, having proved it at Radford that you could go play at, at a power five school and, and compete against those teams? Yes, definitely. Um, I think I, I definitely think that uh, those thinking about those games kind of help um, just kind of let me know that, you know, playing against these power five schools and how I performed uh, lets me know that I can play with these guys. And um I felt like, you know, in those games, you know, a lot of you know, a lot of teams, you know, probably played against us and, and you know, thought it's a mid-major. We don't, you know, necessarily have to show up like that. And, you know, my my attitude towards it was different. You know, mm-hmm. these are power five guys. These are players. And, you know, my attitude was always, I'm the best player on the floor. Um, and that's just how I carried it. And, you know, I'm a type guy that I feel like I live for the big lights. Um, so, I uh, those those games definitely played a role in you know where I think that I could you know play at and stuff. What uh, what ACC trips are you most looking forward to? Um, probably like North Carolina game, uh, Florida State, uh, Duke, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we go there too. So those mm-hmm. those, but really the Duke uh, game, I would love to you know. There in uh, North Carolina, I would love to go to those arenas. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Like you always hear, like people always talk about going to play at these places, and you know, you 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 understand, but sometimes it kind of feels like people are going over the top a little bit with with what place is cool, and then you go and you're like, okay, yeah, this is I right. Get why, I get why they're yeah. saying this, and it's just especially like you know as a as a young, a younger, you know, kid coming coming up, you just watch college basketball and stuff, and you know, you know those big arenas, crazy arenas like West Virginia, Texas, like those like that. Like mm-hmm. my experience there at Texas was, you know, unbelievable. You mm-hmm. know, because I watched, you know, a little bit of Texas basketball growing up. So, you know, for me to be able to, you know, step foot in that arena, mm-hmm. and in the same way with Notre Dame, like for me to be able to step in that arena and be able to, you know. To shoot in that arena, to, you know, uh, to eventually play in there, I think is you know a great experience, and I think it's you know huge. Now, what team did you root for in college basketball when you were coming up? Were you a Cincy guy, Ohio State, Xavier, Kentucky, maybe? Um, I was definitely a huge fan growing up of, of Cincinnati. Okay, um, that's when um you know Bob Huggins was there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after Bob Huggins left, uh. My dream school, honestly, was uh, Michigan State when I was growing up. Okay. Um, so I looked at Michigan State a lot. But, um, yeah, that's probably who I was a fan of, Michigan State. So have you told Mac that you were that you liked Cincinnati growing up? I don't know how he would feel about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think we've had the conversation if, if I like them or Xavier. Um, I definitely liked, you know, both – Cincinnati and Xavier because both they were both in the you know the city. Um, I've been to you know both of their camps and stuff, so I was definitely fans of both. But um, I was a very a real big fan of Bob Huggins. Okay, okay. I, there's a lot of people who love Huggins. He's yeah. he's an entertaining character and he's a great coach. Yeah. Um, last couple things and then we'll get you out of here. One was uh, what player? I'm always interested in asking this. Did you have a single player or maybe one or two players who you really looked up to and tried to emulate when you were evolving as a player and, and learning the game as a kid? 
Um, I mean, I, I looked up. To, I mean, it's hard to say. It's hard to say that I, I kind of, uh, like, kind of wanted to make my game after him. But you know, LeBron James was one. Um, you know, I looked up to him for like the stuff he did as a basketball player, what he did on and off the floor. Um, but you know, I'm not six eight. You know. <laughs> So yeah. I can't kind of, you know, imitate my game after him. But he's definitely a player. And then um, Kyrie Irving. Okay. Kyrie Irving. Yeah. yeah. It's got the handles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to tell me about this game in high school. You had 57 in a game. What Like, were you just feeling it? Or what was what was that experience like? Um, it, I was, I was low-key uh, feeling it. And it was against a rival <laughs> school. Okay. Um, and like the game had started, and you know they ended up winning the tip, and they scored on the first possession. And like soon they scored, there was a lot of trash talking and stuff <laughs> like that. And um, after the trash talking started, it's just kind of like uh, I was just like uh, I was just locked in. Um, it wasn't <laughs> no jokes or or laughs. It was just all seriousness because I even had cousins on the other team. Oh wow! It was like a okay. little family rivalry, kind of thing. <laughs> but um, after you know the game started, it was trash talking. It was just business at that point, um, and I was just locked in. Um, and then I was able to, you know, uh, when I got to fifty-seven, I realized that I actually had beat the, you know our scoring record, which was twenty-five in the game. Um, so I was, I was just very locked in. It was, it was a great, it was a great game though. Now I'm looking back on it. <laughs> I was going to say, you didn't just beat the scoring record. You blew it up, man. 57 yeah. to 25 is not even, that's not even yeah. remotely close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was definitely, um, uh, one of, one of my best games. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Last two. What is the best thing you've eaten so far in Louisville? Ooh. Honestly, it's been a, a couple spots I've had that I don't honestly remember the name of. Okay. I'm kind of sick about it, but um, I'm good on – I'm a big breakfast guy. Like, I, I love breakfast food. So, um, we got uh, First Watch, mm-hmm. um, and I thought for First Watch was, was, was pretty good. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, I'm a type guy. I'll take breakfast over lunch and dinner any day, so – uh, I'm with for you me to have first watch. That was that was probably one of my best my best uh, meals so far. Okay, that's actually I'm not, yeah. I'm I'm still working on trying new spots and stuff like that. I, I want to try you know new things, but uh, that's that's what I got so far. Okay, yeah. There's plenty to pick from in Louisville. Louisville's an yeah. underrated restaurant city. Actually, I don't know if you knew this. Louisville has I think the second or third highest number of restaurants per native per person living here. Uh, I think it's like third in the country. It's New Orleans and New York are the only two cities uh, that are higher. So there's lots I to pick from. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that hasn't changed or else I'm going to look like an idiot. Um, <laughs> and then uh, just your thoughts on the, on the team. I'll, we'll round out here. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are curious. Take us behind the curtains. What, what have you seen from your team? What do you like? What are some areas maybe that still need some work and – um, just your impressions from from practicing with these guys the last few months. Um, first, you know, I want to say that these guys are, are are all good guys. Everyone, you know, on the team is you know a good person. And I'm not just talking on the floor. Um, off the court, they're they're great people. Um, like I've I've said this plenty of times, but though these guys, you know, have opened me with you know they have you know welcomed me with open arms. Um, and I think that's you know huge for me to, you know, be coming in for a year and, you know, guys are already here just welcoming me and uh, basically happy for me to be here. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as the team, I feel like we're, I feel like we're in a, a, a good spot. I mean, we got a couple guys who are, you know, a little hurt right now, um, you know, with Malik Williams being down and uh, Charles being down you know, those few weeks. Um, you know, I feel like it, of course, it hurts us because, you know, those are our brothers. Those are weeks that are our family. Mm-hmm. But um, I think that we're, we're still in a good spot. I know I feel like we got, you know, guys who are capable of stepping up in their spot and, you know, 
holding it down until they return or, you know, stepping up and, you know, handling the job. And I just think that we're, we're, um, I feel like we're, we're going to be underrated. People are going to look at us like, you know, this is not the same Louisville team and stuff like that. But uh, I think this team works hard. Um, if it's, if it's one thing we do, we, we work hard and um, we fight for each other. Uh, we work, we work for one another. And I think that's that's going to take us a long way. Uh, and uh, I know it, we we have a you know a couple things, a couple of screws to tighten up on. You know, just with you know not having a lot of returning guys who you know who have that much of experience, and um, also just having some freshmen um, being a younger team. I know it comes with you know you know maybe sometimes having to you know do drills more than once. Mm-hmm. Um, and stuff like that, just because those guys are still running the game. But um, I think we're going to be in, you know, good hands and and, in a good position because just off the strength, we play hard and uh, we play for one another. And I think we're a pretty tough group of guys. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I I really appreciate uh, you taking some time. I know you're a busy guy these days getting ready for the season. So I appreciate your time. Appreciate you having me. All right. Well, that's Carleek Jones. This has been Floyd Street's finest. Third episode is in the books. And like I said, rate and review us, subscribe and download wherever you get your podcasts, and we'll see you next week.